the Status of Forces Agreement and the Strategic Framework Agreement, uh, which we are currently negotiating, will make explicit that there is no desire for, indeed, there is a rejection of permanent bases. We could not be clearer on this point. We do not believe that there is a need for such basing. We believe there is a need for help and assistance for Iraqi forces as they build up their own capacities. And I would remind that this negotiation is being done with representatives of all of the major leaders of Iraq. But can you categorically then state that the United States is not pursuing or, or seeking to have military bases in Iraq and that this agreement doesn't have such provisions? The President, the Secretaries of State and Defense have affirmed, and I will repeat their words, the U.S. is not seeking permanent military bases in Iraq. Why then this bilateral agreement? Because to date, the U.S. military presence has been maintained under a United Nations Security Council mandate. Why not keep it as such? Because the sovereign government of Iraq has requested the Security Council last December to bring to an end the Chapter 7 mandate that authorizes the presence and operations of the multinational forces in Iraq no later than December 31st of this year. But and in accordance with the sovereign government of Iraq's desires, we are proceeding on negotiation of an arrangement state to state that will replace that international mandate. But Iraq, certainly you would agree, is in a different situation and your relationship with the country is different to the other countries with whom you've signed those and agreements. And each status of forces agreement is different in the country with which it is negotiated. But you are aware that there are political forces inside Iraq that feel very strongly against such an agreement and that have been warning against it, arguing that essentially taking part as it would be now at a time when the Iraqi government is still weak, at a time when uh, some people feel that the country is still partially under occupation, maybe not in legal terms, but certainly in political terms, that this would further weaken the sovereignty of the government. Well, again, I find it very curious that those who would argue that Iraq is still under some form of occupation would be opposed to a negotiation sovereign state to sovereign state that ends whatever traces one might believe signal occupation. You can't have it both ways. Iraq is a sovereign government. It has the right to establish itself in a bilateral sovereign arrangement both with the United States and with the other countries that currently constitute the coalition just as every other state in the region or the world do. When do you hope to finalize the agreement? We would hope by the end of July that we can conclude the agreement. And what kind of ag agreement are you looking for? What kind of time frame are you also looking for in terms of U.S. military presence in the country? Would it be five years, ten years, maybe twenty or fifty? We are not going to put, the Iraqis are not seeking a time limit on forces. In fact, though, we believe that the authorities for our forces to operate, indeed the presence of our forces, is very much dependent on circumstances. And we see circumstances in Iraq improving. We don't see a need for U.S. forces to remain engaged in combat activities or detention operations, at least at the level that they are now, for an indefinite period of time. We see Iraqis taking over these responsibilities as their capabilities mature and as the circumstances on the ground improve. But the